Hurry, hurry. Step on. Schmidt beer. The brew that grew to be best in the great Northwest. Your finest craft beer, Rocky. Man to man, smoke Roy Tan. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, here are Greg, Scott, and Dan coming at you ice cold and unfiltered. That's the only way we do it. That's us. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen. You made it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for drinking along. I am Greg. Over there, that's Scott. Greetings. And that's Dan. Salutations. (laughs) So formal. Yes. (laughs) Oh, God. Like I said, thanks for listening, and especially thanks to listening to our top listening city of the week last week, which was... I'm dropping pens over here. <laughs> Denver, Colorado. Ooh, Ooh snap. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Denver. Yeah, no Mile kidding. High. Yeah, great beer city, by yes, the way. Indeed. They do have some great beer in Denver, uh, which leads us to our burp word of the week. Mile high. All right. All right. <laughs> Dan guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> How did I do that? <laughs> it's, it's magical. <laughs> Yes, our Burp of the Week is Mile High. Thank you, Denver. If you guys are on the social medias and you're posting pictures of your beers or your great cans, don't forget to hashtag show us your beers and hashtag cans for cans. Do that. We love great cans. Uh, Rate and subscribe to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, iHeart, Stitcher, uh, Spotify, whatever you listen to podcasts on. Make sure you give us a little something. Helps other people find us, and it's just weird algorithm stuff that I am not nerdy enough for. So just... Just do it, and, and we'll be happy you did. Easy enough. <laughs> uh, we got a lot to get to today, but before we get to anything, I just think we need to get to some beer. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend, and I say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Dan's taking a sniffy sniff over there. Yeah, I'm getting a little preview over here. Yeah. <laughs> Sneak preview. A little pre-show. Uh, we are drinking Lord... Lord? Wow, it's already begun. Lord Hobo Brewing's Angelica N.E. is in Northeast. Wheat. N.E. Wheat. 5.5%, 4.02 on Beer Advocate, 3.7 on uh, Untapped. From Lord Hobo, they say, New England Take... On a classic beer style, Angelica offers the refreshing drinkability of a wheat beer, wheat, combined with fruit juice characteristics and elegant haze of an NEIPA. I can taste the wheat. The wheat. Wheat. Wheat thins. Quill wheaten. (laughs) Quill whip. (laughs) Sorry. Yeah, it smells uh, much more like a hazy IPA. It's got the fruity tropical hoppiness to it. Yeah. Mm. Very, yeah, mm-hmm. I just can't get past that wheat. In a good way or a bad way? In a good way. Interesting. Yeah, it's very... Uh, the wheat flavor to... Wheat. Wheat. Wheat, wheat flavor to me. Yeah, let's forever say it that way. Yeah, is not that strong. I get like a nice kind of mouthfeel from it. Sorry to take your term there. Uh, mouthfeel from the wheat. Um, but I don't get a lot of flavor from the carbonation it. Carbonation from it, too. Yeah, it's definitely got yeah. the, the, a little more carbonation to it than a, a regular haze you would have. But... Mm-hmm. To yeah. me, it just it tastes like a hazy with a little bit of wheat added to it. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Is it weird? Is it good? It's good, but I, I agree it's kind of flat tasting. But I mean, I'll yeah. I don't know. I can appreciate it. I get um, a lot of tropical. Yeah, it's funny. You know, in, in like a hazy, you get a lot of the flavor on the back end. This one, I get like tropical up front, and then as I finish, hey now. Uh, <laughs> it kind of dies off, like the flavor doesn't stick around, which is mm-hmm. characteristic of a wheat. So it is interesting. I got this in a, you know, Lord Hobo. We're out here in California, and if you didn't know from the last show, where we very specifically gave a certain exit where a water burger used to be, <laughs> <laughs> we are in Southern California. It's a trip. I never knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't get lord hobo out here very often other than like boom sauce and and a couple of their popular ones they had a mixed six pack uh, brewery six pack where it's just a flight of all their beers and i've never heard of this one and it is definitely easy to drink mm-hmm. uh it'd be a great football beer it's five and a half percent you kind of drink yeah. it all day oh yeah um 4.02 on beer advocate 37 on 
untapped is interesting because usually they're a lot closer to that to each other than those two scores so mm. uh anyways i enjoy it um get a little tropical a little bit of the breadiness on the end that's probably what i'm looking for there you go that's the word yes yeah, we kept yeah. saying wheat wheat, wheat. But i think wheat. we're looking for bread yeah <laughs> <laughs> well there's wheat in bread yes I think. that is accurate i don't know most, is there? I think most I don't bread know. yeah yeah sure there is most okay. breads i think have wheat <laughs> wheat Exactly. So thank you for listening to the cooking show. Yeah. <laughs> Julia Childs over here. <laughs> uh anyway, I enjoy it. This is uh this is different. I like it. I I wish I had another one. They we only get one of each because I want to see what the lady friend thinks of it. She likes white IP she hates a- IPAs oh. and she hates wheat beers, mm. but she likes white IPAs. I'd be interested to see what she thinks about this. Yeah, this kind of so yeah. she likes those it's not white f- IPAs. Yeah, white. this is not an official white IPA, right? Right, I mean that's not what they call it. They, they call it a oh, N E wheat. You could fool me into saying it was a white IPA. I mean, a white IPA is essentially just a wheat IPA. So mm, okay, yeah. wheat white, yeah, it's same thing. Yeah. Tomato, tomato, <laughs> tomato, huh? <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. It's only like the name of a sumo wrestler. <laughs> oh yeah, coming out now. <laughs> tomato, <laughs> tomato. <laughs> so, all right, we got lots to get to. We got some crotch talk. Uh, drunk quote, beer babe of the week. Uh, got a very delicious bullpen beer. We're gonna crap. We're gonna treat ourselves. Treat yourself. <laughs> treat yourself. <laughs> We're gonna be treating ourselves. Uh, we have a tales from Uber to get to. Lots of booze news and a new thing I'd like to introduce. We'll see how it goes over. Uh, we'll see how many negative tweets I get. <laughs> 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 Is uh, the one thing I love about like our old timey theming. Like I love old timey commercials because they're either like super just horrible. Or they're selling cigarettes to kids. <laughs> Very dated. Like I, yeah, I just love the datedness of them. Plus, love like it. the old timey voice, you know, it's like, "Hey, kids, would you like to smoke some cigars?" You know. <laughs> so I just, I just love everything about old commercials. <laughs> I was, I was watching one where Yogi Bear was selling Bush beer. <laughs> I oh, shit really? you not. Yeah, it was, it was like a four minute cartoon where Yogi and Boo Boo were running the bar. <laughs> And like they had like wigs on or something, and they're selling only bush beer. Oh wow! And Mr. Slate comes in, and uh, they try to get him drunk to get a raise out of him. Mr. Slate, yeah. Oh yeah. my god. Oh, it was so great. That's gotta funny. love that bush. Yeah, gotta love that bush. Like, so. I don't know, Yogi. We shouldn't be drinking out in the park yeah. like this. Like, shut up, boo boo. Oh wait, did I say Yogi? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Flintstones. Uh, oh, Flintstones. Wow. I can't believe I said, you said Yogi. Yogi and Boo Boo. Wow. Oh. I've had a couple of beverages. Ooh, ooh. Flintstones. Fred and uh, Barney. Barney. Oh, okay. Well, not Yogi and Boo. Wow. Jesus Christ. Edit point. Hey, uh, Boo Boo. Fred and, and Barney. We're just, selling Bush beer. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen, everyone's seen the commercial of them smoking cigarettes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fred they're, and they're Barney. Just, yeah. They're just up to no good over yeah. there. Yeah. Same kind of thing. They're, smoking, drinking. Yeah. Smoking, they, drinking. Yeah. Straight West Coast. Bad sucking. influence on me. <laughs> Yeah, people come to the bar and you're like, what do you got? Like, all we serve here is Bush, pal. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So, Flint, so sorry, not Yogi. Yeah, I can't that, believe that Yogi one episode never... where Barney was sucking Fred. That kind of messed <laughs> me up for life. Yes. The drinking fossil stone beers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's yeah. really cool. Fossil stone. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, so, anyways, I love the old commercial. So, we're going to start doing a thing where we take a commercial break. Okay. And it's, I like uh, that. It's an old timey commercial. So. It's around me in my, my childhood. Right, exactly. Yeah. Back so, when I was a teenager or yeah, whatever. Back when you're in your 30s yeah uh so we'll see how it goes hopefully people enjoy uh let us know you know at unfiltered gents on twitter uh in the meantime twitter i'm still saying it like wheat <laughs> there's no there's no h in twitter uh in the meantime let's get in some crotch talk have a grievance to share it's time for a crotch talk uh i don't think i well i have a little bit of a grievance first mm. we talked about this last week on the show uh flatfish brewery is doing their uh resilience beer party for lack of a better term yes uh resilience ipa grand tasting it's february 20th 2019 5 to 10 p.m uh taste resilience ipa from seven ventura county breweries plus sierra nevada Mm. uh if you're in the ventura county area this is gonna be a fun event it's gonna be red tandem twisted oak leashless uh rincon made west fig mountain of course flatfish and Sierra Nevada will wow. be there as well. All the heavy hitters. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Exactly. Like the all-star game of beers. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to be up there like Cyrus and like, and nobody's wasting nobody <laughs> for the movie The Warriors. Uh, and I hear there's word that uh, Scott Grossman, Ken Grossman, the founder of Sierra Nevada's brother, 
will be there as well to to talk about resilience. So that'll be oh, even cool. Yeah. We, I met him at Disneyland once. He was doing a thing at the Food and Wine Festival and teaching class on Sierra Nevada beer. He's a really cool guy. He'll basically answer any question you got for him. He was, <laughs> he was really fun and and does not uh, fear having a couple of beverages with you. So huh. uh, February 20th at 5 p.m. It's in Camarillo, California yep. at Flatfish Brewing. Ticketed event. You can go to Eventbrite uh, for tickets and just search for Ventura County Resilience IPA Grand Tasting. I'll tell you the link, but it's insanely long. I'll also post links on our social medias. Uh, just a few that. miles from the old Whataburger. Exactly. <laughs> that is true. If you listen yeah. to the last episode, it's only <laughs> a few exits down. Yes. Uh, tickets only $15, and I was talking to Mike at Flatfish about it, and you get a tasting of uh, all eight resiliences. Oh, cool. 15 bucks, eight tastings. Wow. I think four ounces cool. each. Don't quote me on that. Uh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it'd be a lot of fun. It's all going to the Campfire Relief Fund, so you're drinking for a cause. Hashtag, can you dig it? <laughs> Shaq's down. <laughs> he's ready to go. Uh, also, Mike was telling me he's looking for volunteers to help pour and and uh, take tickets and that sort of stuff. So if mm. anybody wants to volunteer February 20th, it's a Wednesday, uh, you can hit up Mike. It's Mike at KintaraSellers.com. Or you can email me at uh, TheUnfilteredGentleman at gmail.com. I'll, I'll help connect you. Or you can just go to FlatfishBrewing.com and, and hit the contact button there. If you want to help out, help pour some beer or, or kick people out at the door, whatever you want to do, he's, right. he's looking for help. So uh, either go drink or go help pour beer. It's cool. all for a good cause. Grievance time. Uh-oh. <sighs> Uh-oh. You guys remember the last time I went up to Northern California <laughs> to visit the lady friend's family? Oh, yeah. You were up at your knees and shit. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was hosing shit out of a houseboat. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, the boating fun continued. Oh, oh Lord. Uh, luckily, there was no shit this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt. Uh, so a bunch of family was over at that same family member's house that has the boat. Mm -hmm. And at one point, someone said like, oh, you know, it's been a few months. Somebody ought to go down and start the engines on the boats. Just, you know, you got it's just like a car. It's got to run every here and there to keep it going and lubricated and all that good stuff. Of course, can't leave well enough alone. The person that went down to start the boat engines decided to like nose around a little bit. Found out there's a little bit of extra water in the boat. Usually, you want to keep the water out of the boat. Uh, <laughs> so wait, hold on. So did you guys end up taking the boats at some point? The boats. I'm happy to report, never left the dock. Oh, okay. So how do they always get these bright ideas when you guys show up? <sighs> because there's people there to help. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a family outing. Hey, guys, let's go out. So you know what? Let yeah. me just check the boats. Clean well, the shit off the boat. It was, it was just a family dinner. It was supposed to be like a family dinner. Mm -hmm. I cooked all day. I cooked like half the dinner. Oh, Damn. And Lord. then it was like, so they went out there and they did the boat stuff. And I just excused myself. I was like, you know what? I've been cooking all fucking day for you people. <laughs> you can go do boat shit. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And so they went out there and they were like, they got a, uh, you know, like a shot vac and they emptied out some of the water and whatever. And then they decided like, oh, well, clearly we need to cover these boats with tarps so no more water gets in. Somebody runs the store, gets tarps. And then all of a sudden like, Greg, we need your help covering with tarps. And look, if you listen to whatever episode it was where I complained about having to drain the shit, this is nothing like the shit episode. Right. I, I just stood there basically holding a flashlight for three hours because they're so uh enable to decide what the hell they want to do the entire time someone's like oh we should cover it this way then cover it and then they started complaining to the guy who brought the tarp it was like it's too big of a tarp you know it's like because that's <laughs> wow. a, just too cover big for a boat right it was too big like, they get one for a building <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on it was, here it was like three feet too long that's what she said <laughs> and it was like all right so just cover it tie it down and there'll be a little flappy thing on the end like who cares like a condo. sell the fucking right. boat Exactly. Good Ooh. Lord. And so the lady friend comes down and was like, what's happening? I was like, well, it's a bunch of old men not deciding what to do with this tarp. <laughs> and she's like, well, what would you do? And I was like, oh, I'd, I'd, I'd tie it here and zip. And we had zip Gasoline ties too. matches. Right. <laughs> a drill at the bottom. Uh, <laughs> she I was like, just stepped in like, this is why you need me here. Well, Let me I, do this. So I told her, I was like, well, if they would just do this, this, and this, we'd have been done an hour and a half ago. And she's like, why don't you say something? I was like, because I'm not fucking retarded. Like, that's, I am <laughs> oh. not. Yeah, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to hold my stupid flashlight true. and let these old men argue over engineering this thing. Like yeah. by the time they were done, they could have gotten a rocket to the moon. Like they <laughs> over engined the that's fuck. That's true. Over engineered you, the fuck. You out open up your mouth, you might be on shit detailing. Yep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks, Greg. You jump yep. right in there. Yeah. <laughs> here's the here's the hose, shit boy. 
Yeah, I was done. I just I told her I'm not going to fucking say words. She's like, do you want me to say something? I'm like, you say whatever you want. It was not my idea. <laughs> so she left and like came back and she's like, God, you got, they're still deciding. I said, yep, and I'm still holding this fucking flashlight. <laughs> oh, my God. She's like, I'm going to say something. So she goes and is like, you know, if you guys did this, 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 and this, like it'd be fine. And they looked around them and then, of course, because she's a girl, like they tried to find reasons why she was wrong. Of course, yeah. you yeah. know, because three old men can't listen to a, a girl with engineering oh God, things. No. Yeah. <laughs> so finally, after five minutes of trying to figure out how she could be wrong, they decided she wasn't. They're like, "All right, let's try it." And then, of course, ten minutes later, we were done. Boom. Yeah, I was like, "Oh my God, I cannot stand you fucks with your boat." <laughs> Enough with the boat. Oh man. Yeah, need some gas and a match. I yeah, think you're right. Lord. Yeah, they're all insured. Are they? Well, there you go. Yeah, they are all. I mean, injured. how does that happen? And you're sitting around eating dinner. And oh, speaking of mashed potatoes, we go check out the boat. Maybe they're asking for it. You know, it's like, hey, well, maybe if we annoy Greg so much, he'll burn the boat down. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's yeah. Guys, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, all they gotta do is ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the old saying: the two best days of your life is the day you buy a boat and the day you sell your boat. Yeah. Yep. That's true. That's true. Well, as somebody who, I wouldn't say I own a boat, but I am in uh, somewhat control over a boat, which is not theirs. It's a much smaller boat. They have like house boats and shit. Mm -hmm. I just I just run a ski boat. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It's fun. You plop it in the water. You wakeboard. You there drink you some beer. You take it out of the water. You go drink some more fucking beer. That's what I heard, too. I heard that boat is an acronym for bust out another thousand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of money yeah, to true. maintain those things. <laughs> well, it was like... Can you guys go do me this one favor of start the engine? Please don't do anything else. And it turned into like, oh, we got to oh, spit shine God. your boats over here. Oh, so it's just, man. I'm done going up there until they get rid of their boats. Yeah. Which is going to have to be the solution. It's interesting. Yeah, this just keeps happening. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, it's a problem. We yeah. need help here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the saga continues. Yeah. Like, would, the ask was innocent. It was like, please go start the engines. That's all I'm asking. Don't, and even it was said, like, don't do anything else. Just start the engines. Mm. But yeah, if, if you have to go up there again, I would suggest buying some signs that say "Boat for Sale." Hey, <laughs> look what I found on sale at the store. Yeah, <laughs> you that just like claiming I'm afraid of water all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. H two O phobe. I don't know. Is that yeah, I almost drowned one time. So yeah, man. I was like six. We're yeah. at the beach. <laughs> yeah, I almost drowned. Yeah, and ever since then, yeah. Yeah. I got ate by a shark one time. And right, exactly. Yep. So he shit me out just in time before I died <laughs> or something. Sounds like the worst Pinocchio tale ever. <laughs> Shark instead of a whale. Uh, on a happy note, okay. I am going to San Diego this weekend. On Ooh. a boat? Uh, not on a boat. Okay. There will be no boating. <laughs> Beer mecca of the world. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're doing a little more research for the wedding venue. We All talked right. about this a few weeks back. We went to like Paso it. for some research. So we narrowed it down to probably one place up in Paso we liked. We've got a few places we're checking out in San Diego, one of which is a brewery. Uh -huh. I love it. Yeah. And uh, we'll check those places out, make a decision. While I'm down there, I'll be doing another interview with uh, Cameron from Helix. He oh, opened yeah. up a new place next door to Helix. Wow. It's called Sour Works. Mm. So he's doing all sour. So I'm going to go down Ooh, there and shit. tie it. <laughs> There's a reason I didn't invite you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, I've been to hell and back. I don't know. I got to try some more sours, I think. I, I dig sours. As long as they're not like that fucking Sharpie beer we had. I'm <laughs> saying. I can't yeah. get any worse than that. And I finished <laughs> it, so. Yeah, that's true. You're a real man now. Yeah. Put like, some hair on I your chest. I think we graduated. Yes. Yeah. So uh, going down there to talk to him about Sour Works. Uh, excited for that episode because I love Helix. So how how much would I love Saddleworks? We'll find out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's it for me. Anybody have any uh, things to share? Grievances? No. Happy things? Mm -mm. All right. That's fair. No. I'm glad to see no one's grievancing. -ing. That's a word now. Oh. Yeah. Grievancing? Gre 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 grievance. 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 Anyways. Yeah, what you said. Yeah. Uh, drunk <laughs> quote of the week. You're not drunk if you can lie on the floor without holding on. Ooh. Dean Martin. I like it. Yeah. yeah. The ultimate drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he was. Yeah. We need another Dean Martin these days. It's true. He was such a drunk. And yeah. proud of it, too. I'm trying to think of like who that next Dean Martin would be. Yeah. Who would it be? Looking at Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like if, if you go the actor route, like, you know, Leo DiCaprio is a pretty big partier. Correct. Correct. womanizer and that kind of thing but i don't look at him as a drunk i mean that's how we look at dean martin we all look at dean martin like that's he's true. a drunk you like, need to be a drunk yeah 
Like Leo's known for acting. Dean's known for drinking. Yeah, and in a classy way. I mean, everyone knows Nick Nolte as a drunk, <laughs> but that's in a negative way. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. There's no like you know uh, pictures of Dean Martin all messed up like from a DUI. Right. Yeah. I mean, he held cocktail like you'd have yeah. a you know a, a martini yeah somehow that was classy because it's a martini you know it's got olive and shit in it <laughs> it's true it's a meal it's got an olive in it uh-huh so it's, it's a salad yeah exactly huh damn man yeah should we start drinking martinis oh my god <laughs> can we be dean martin i would like to be dean martin that's true that guy was a baller mm-hmm. uh all right let's move on to a better part of the show there's nothing better than a babe with craft beer it's time for Beer Babe of the Week. Our Beer Babe this week, her name is Kayla, and you can find her on the grams of Insta at Kayla Likes Beer. Nice. All one word. Nice. No dots, no dashes, no spaces, no underscores. <laughs> Kayla Likes Beer. In this picture, she's drinking something from Alarmist Brewing, which yeah. I have not had. She's got her can covered. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag cans for cans. Hashtag uh, koozie. A koozie. <laughs> uh, make sure you're following Kayla on the grams at Kayla Likes Beer. Uh, all right. Tales from Mover. Got a commercial break. We got a bullpen beer. I think we should move things over uh, to Scott with a little Tales from Mover. Does your cabbie make you queasy? <gasps> it's Tales from Uber. So I think I actually did make my passenger a little queasy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I made the mistake of driving sober. So Oh, that is a problem. Yeah. Uh, what happened was uh, driving in Oxnard, and I picked the uh, picked, poor guy. First of all, he, he he scheduled a lift the night before that never showed up. Oh, so, that's right. You can schedule him to show up at certain times. You can times. schedule it, yeah. And they never showed up. So out mm. of desperation, he gets Uber, which unfortunately he got me. Um, <laughs> it's a bad night. So what happened was we were getting ready to turn on a a major road in Oxnard, a major, it's Savior's Road, if those of you who are local, those of you who are not, you don't really care. Yes. So when yes, I was getting ready to turn things. left, um, there's another car coming towards me to turn left, going the other way with his brights on. So I really couldn't see that well. Dick. Yes. So as I turned, and it, right after I turned, I noticed, oh, shit, the island is on my right-hand side. <laughs> so <laughs> That's I'm, not the sidewalk. I'm going the wrong way. And my passenger was very calm. He goes, um, I think you're going the wrong way. And well, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm, I realized, I realized I'm going to make a U-turn right here. <laughs> Fortunately, it's like five in the morning and it's, you know, there's Desolated. nobody on the road. Yeah, there's nobody on the road. Not that many people on the road. Wow. Right. So I just made a quick U and then turned around and <laughs> got back on the right side of the road. <laughs> oh, shit. God. Oh, man. I, I, I was so embarrassed. When this started, I thought it was like you were just out driving to go pick up somebody but then there's a, a passenger in the car he's a, in the car he's always a witness to yeah. that <laughs> yeah oh, and man. very calm fortunately you know he's like <laughs> not good. freaking out he's just, um i you're on the wrong side of the road this guy's <laughs> drunk <laughs> yeah, it was funny one time like um when i was in high school my buddy used to drive us around everywhere because he had his uh permit and you know i didn't so uh he was uh making like i don't know we had pissed somebody off or something like that you know teens will be teens i suppose Typical. <laughs> yeah and we make a right you know and you know trying to and this guy's trying to get around us or something like that but we i guess we made a really far right <laughs> and then we're just looking at him like cussing him off and everything <laughs> he's just staring at us like what the hell and you know look up and we're like in the wrong lane i'm like dude what the fuck are you doing man we're in the wrong lane he's like oh shit and and this is like i mean this is like after school so i mean this is like three in the afternoon <laughs> yeah i don't know how we avoided like no traffic coming down it was on <laughs> gonzalez and so if, you know i mean that's like a pretty heavily right. a heavily traffic street in Oxnard, basically and uh yeah he made the three-point turn and we were on our way <laughs> austin powers your way out yeah of it. yeah he's like it was funny though because afterwards he's like yeah so i showed that guy he thinks i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> he thinks you're an idiot yeah you psycho so maybe driving on the wrong side of the road is like normal in Oxnard. Maybe know. it could be. You're yeah. used to it by now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. nobody got excited. I mean, cars are going the other way, and you just like passing me by, you know. And they're like, <laughs> "Hey, how you doing? <laughs> You're going no, the wrong way, no sir." Biggie. Yeah. The worst I ever did was the first time that uh, I had been to San Diego many a time, but the first time I ever drove there myself, stayed downtown, and I was I don't know twenty twenty one somewhere in there. Uh, stayed downtown where there's one way streets, and I thought I'd kind of figure out the lay of the land. And we're leaving the hotel to go home. I was like, oh, the freeway 
It's just I remember seeing the on ramp just up the street. So I just turned right, turned the corner onto the street. I was like, "Fuck, man! A lot of people are parked on the wrong side of the street." Oh my god! <laughs> and then it hits me. I was like, "Oh fuck! No, they're not. It's a one way street." <laughs> and luckily, it was like Sunday at nine in the morning. I guess everyone was at church or something because there was nobody out. Oh man! But uh, I very quickly turned around. I was like, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That was a good time. I think I've only ever, I got close to turning on a one way street one time. But I was like, whoa, <laughs> I was like, where are, I almost did that right now. <laughs> Working in downtown LA, like I mm. see a lot of people do it. Yeah. It's, it's easy there. Yeah. Yeah, it was my first time in LA. So it was just kind of like, oh shit, they have these here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was my first time with one way streets was in downtown LA. Mm-hmm. You know, grew up in the, in the burbs where that doesn't really happen. Right. Go downtown. It's like, what do you mean one way? Mm-hmm. That's weird. So uh, yeah, L.A. is weird. L.A. L.A. sucks. True that. Yeah. So uh, well, I'm glad uh, you and your passenger made it out yes, alive. Yes, we survived. No yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you leave you a tip after that? Uh, surprisingly, no. Oh, how weird. <laughs> I don't understand. Did you get reported? <laughs> well, they took my license. <laughs> uh, but Uber's okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uber, it- I'm still their best driver. Yeah. Scott, yeah. we heard you weren't drinking the other night. <laughs> yeah. Please don't ever let that happen yeah. again. Yeah. That's that's dangerous. So. I know. All right. Well, before we make our way to the bullpen beer, I'd like to pause for this commercial break and a word from our sponsor. Oh, this coffee is criminal. Honey, you killed the petunias. Then you admit it. Your coffee really is murder. Papa Eddie, my coffee, it's murder. It's either too bitter or too weak. Try Folgers. Because Folgers coffee is mountain grown. Mountain grown? Like the sign says, mountain grown for richer flavor. You know, it's a crime not to have delicious coffee like this all the time. We will now that I've discovered the mountains. Ooh. Folgers Coffee, mountain grown for richer flavor. Sounds kind of like the Lakers announcer guy at the end. Oh, there. yeah, yeah, Lawrence yeah. Tanner. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Number 24, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, he did sound that way a yeah, little bit. Yeah, right? So, anyways, uh, let me know if you guys enjoy that. If not, we'll stop. But I, I, I enjoy the old commercials. Yeah, I like it. It's good stuff. Scott probably remembers that uh, one. Yeah. I like to watch um like old like football or basketball games because I feel like sports suck now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's this one like upload somebody has of the 1975 NBA Finals. Uh-huh. And it's complete with all commercials from 75. So oh, wow. really? It's really interesting to see everything. Like Volkswagens were big <laughs> in 75, <laughs> apparently. I was like, holy shit. Full of sexism and racism, I'm it's sure. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's the way it should be. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the bullpen beer. It's time to treat ourselves. Three words for you: treat yourself. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, indeed, we do. We are treating ourselves. Three words for you: treat yourself. With Firestone Walker Anniversary Twenty Two Anniversary Ale. Oh, man. (laughs) This is good. (laughs) A little about 22. Since founding our brewery in 1996, we have specialized in the rare art of brewing beer in oak barrels. In the fall of 2006, we released a limited edition oak Age strong ale called 10 to commemorate our 10th anniversary. The experience was greater than any any one of us could have imagined. We now present XXII, which I can only imagine means 22. Our 13th release and was becoming an annual autumn right at our brewery. Do you guys know about their anniversary ales at all? No. Besides that they're delicious. Uh, they get local winemakers from the area. They're up in Paso Robles where there's a ton of uh, wine establishments. They get local winemakers to make these blends. And the winning blend that year becomes their anniversary oh, ale. Oh, wow. So it says, every August, right before the wine harvest gets rolling, our local winemaker friends come to the brewery to help blend our annual anniversary ale. Winemakers are practicing uh, experts in the art of blending, and we realized early on that they could provide invaluable input for creating a seamless beer out of numerous barrel-aged component ales. The winemakers come for both the challenge and the camaraderie. They split up into small teams and create their own preferred blends from the provided components. Each of the resulting trial, uh, each of the resulting trials is then blend. Excuse me, English is hard. 
blind tasted see. by the entire group and votes are cast for the winning blend. The victorious team walks away with bragging rights and with a set of coveted cardboard crowns. So the final blend, which was uh, brought to us by Terry Hogue and Phil Lamontane of TH Estate Wines, Sherman Thatcher and Daniel Callen of Thatchery Winery, and Ari Littman of Breadmaker and Friend. Uh, oh, just a bread maker and friend, I guess. Anyways, the final blend is 44% Sticky Monkey, mm. 22% Parabola, wow, 22% Bravo, oh, shit. 7% Rum Barrel Aged Hell Dorado, and 5% Gen Barrel Aged Hell Dorado. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> so ABVs of 12.9, 13.7, 13.6, 14.5, 14.5, and 11.4. The final ABV... Coming in at 12.7 with 32 IBUs has a 4.1, excuse me, 4.31 on Beer Advocate and a 4.33 on Untapped. What do you guys think of this one? Oh my god, fantastic! Yeah, it's like, very, very beautiful. Like uh, <laughs> it's the All Star game, it's the All Star team. Yeah, <laughs> those... man. So the Warriors again in my <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Hey, now, there's a drop to pull. <laughs> Nobody's wasting nobody. <laughs> Three words for you. Treat yourself. I can dig it. Yeah, I get a lot of that boozy barrel age on the nose. Mm-hmm. A little bit like fig and raisin, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, you said that they got the like a wine contributor mm-hmm. to come in, and you can definitely taste that. And mm-hmm. it just classes it up, man. Yeah. It definitely classes it up. Like, I mean, this is a pinkies up drink right here. This is definitely kidding. pinkies up. I oh, feel like yeah. we're not drinking out the proper glassware. Probably not. Probably not. We'll, but we'll suffice. What are you going to do? Yeah. I'm going to drink more of this. It's got liquid gold in here. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's delicious. Um, you can definitely tell, at least I can, that Sticky Monkey is the base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the biggest base. Like it really has definitely. That. That sticky monkey quality. Very sticky, very monkey. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, a lot of that brown sugar that you get out of sticky monkey. Um, but whew, it's a little warm on the finish. Yep. Taste yeah. that booze. Mm-hmm. I love this it's bad great. boy. Yes. I will tell you that the lady friend, we tried this like a week or so ago, was not a huge fan of this year's anniversary blend. Ooh. She likes other years past much better. So, God damn. Yeah. I, I can't imagine... One really making an impression on me like this. This is really good. We'll just have to keep doing it, I guess, every Probably, year. Probably, yeah. Because they're all phenomenal. They they get their best beers and they just oh. know, blend them together. I so, really yeah. like this one. How do we become a part of that blending crew? Like, Do we have to open a winery to be on the panel? I mean, we just blended, into. blended on the last show. That's right. It's Damn. not like we're bad at it. No, we're qualified. That's right. Shit, let's give them a call. Oh, yeah. show. Yeah, just, yeah. Listen to our show. Yeah, see what Matt Brennan says. Hey, yeah. listen to this. We totally blended these beers. Yeah, yeah we're way over we're blenders. Yeah, we blended more beers than most of the winemakers up there have. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hey, I like it. Yeah. All right, we're going to continue to sip on this liquid gold. Sip it. While we talk a little news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. Sierra Nevada says they'll be committing at least $10 million to a new grant program aimed at providing relief to the Northern California communities affected by last November's campfire. Uh, this is different than the Resilience IPA, and it's not immediate help. It's going to things like uh, health and wellness, education, community development, and business recovery. So it's for the long-term survival of the area. So Sierra Nevada stepping in big once again for the fires up there. Um they also have appointed a new CEO, Ken Grossman, the founder, is stepping out as CEO, is transitioning to the uh, chairman role, and has appointed COO, Jeff White, to the role of CEO. Hmm. Is it bad that whenever I read things about CEO and COO and chairman, I was like, my only real reference for knowing what those means is wrestling? <laughs> I thought, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, dude. Hey, I thought of Triple H as soon as you said CEO. Yeah. I was thinking about Suge Knight from Death Row Records, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's always that way. I always go hip hop. You always go wrestling. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was interesting. like, I know Vince is the chairman. Yeah. I know Triple H is the COO. I just remember like on the back of Death Row Records, like whatever you bought, it was Dr. Dre or Snoop Dogg and big fat fucking letters on the back. It said, <laughs> executive producer, Shug Knight. I was like, oh shit. I guess he had a lot to do with this album more than Snoop did apparently. Yeah. I guess Shug was the one rapping. Yeah. No kidding. Jeez. <laughs> we have horrible... <laughs> 
references for yeah, things. Yeah, we do. Hey, people know what we're talking about. Oh, they totally know. That's right. Who, who doesn't know who Vince McMahon and Suge Knight are? Come yeah. On. How dare you? They're the biggest CEOs of all time. It's probably true. Yeah. At least the most infamous. That's right. Uh, Flying Dog Brewery hopes to release a cannabis-infused beer. A pending, pending approval from the Maryland Medical Cannabis Commission, Flying Dog Brewery and Greenleaf Medical Cannabis plan to release Hop Chronic IPA, the state of Maryland's first THC-infused non-alcoholic beer. Again. Mm. Again. Interesting. Wow. The two companies announced that they, are, they intend to make Hop Chronic available to the state's medical cannabis patients as an alternative to smoking or vaping as early as this summer. Uh, for people who don't want to smoke, don't want to vape, there's no path of experience, uh, no path of experiencing therapeutical benefits. Flying Dog CEO Jim Caruso told Brewbound, "It feels good to be part of a of creating a delicious IPA where people who want to experience cannabis can do that." All right. I mean, can we put a little booze in there, though? Yeah, come on. Please. I mean, you could also eat a gummy bear, I suppose. Yeah, he's <laughs> acting as if there's no edibles. Yeah, there's plenty of edibles. There are brownies, gummy bears, candy bars, whatever. And and, and, and I don't know, man. If those beers hit you as hard as those fucking edibles do, <laughs> be fucking careful. Yeah, I'm gonna take shot glasses of those things, dude. <laughs> it's a different animal, man. Do you ever see that uh, video of Red Man? Where no. like, yeah, where he's like, Red Man's like the biggest pothead. I mean, like, right. there's a Mount Rushmore of potheads. You got <laughs> Cheech and Chong and then probably Method Man and Red Man. <laughs> yeah. You know, but uh, he said that he won't do edibles because he said one time he took an edible, you know, it was just a little, like, little, like, scoop thing, and he ate it all. And they said, hey, just one scoop. <laughs> ate one scoop, freaked out. <laughs> he said he was going nuts in his hotel room. Oh, he couldn't show up for a meeting, had to cancel it. Like, he was messed up. I mean, he's... He's Red Man. He's Red Man. Come Biggest on. Biggest stoner ever. That's right. That's funny. I remember my first edible. It was a brownie. Mm-hmm. And they were like, do not eat more than half. Right. I was like, oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> and I waited like half an hour. I was like, well, I don't feel shit. I'm going to eat the whole thing. That's Everyone oh, does that. Me too. <laughs> every, it's the worst. It's awful. Oh, God. I, it was bad because like I just barely started to feel it. And I was at someone's house. I was like, well, I'm going to go home now because I'm just starting to feel it. And I got to drive and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like halfway home, it fully kicked oh in. Oh my god! Oh my god! I was probably driving six miles an hour the whole way home. Like it was ridiculous. That's scary. Dude. It was scary. I was like, I never want to do that again. Yeah. Like edibles from now on are <laughs> on on days off. Yeah. And, yeah. No, oh I've only god. ever done that like at home. Yeah. But it's funny because one time, like you said, you know, you take half and you're like, that was nothing. I'm gonna take right. the rest. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you look at you know, I was thinking like, oh my god! I looked at the time; it was like eleven o'clock at night or something like that. Yeah, and I'm sitting around. I'm like, oh god, half an hour had to have passed, and I look, it's eleven o two. Like, oh my god, it's gonna be a long fucking night, Daniel. Better put on a good movie. <laughs> Where's Wolf Cop? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember I gave somebody edibles; they had never had them before. But they wanted to try them, and I, mm-hmm. I found and procured and gave. And I was like, no matter what you think, wait. At least an hour. Yeah. Like people always say half hour, and it's not enough. You're going to get to half an hour, and you're going to be like, yeah. I don't feel shit. I'm going to eat the rest of these cookies. Do not do it. Say, like, wait a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> wait a day. Wait a day. <laughs> an hour goes by, two hours. You know what? It's going to hit you at some point. Just right. wait it. Yeah. Wait it out. So don't do it, people. Mm-hmm. Public service announcement. That's right. Oh, Rogue Ales and Spirits to release Rolling Thunder Stouted Whiskey. This is really interesting. Try to stay with me, and I'll try to read this as best as possible. Uh, from Rolling Thunder Barrel Works, Rogue's Newport-based co- uh, cooperage, comes the return of Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout and the new Rolling Thunder Stouted Whiskey. A first-of-its-kind stouted American single malt whiskey, Rolling Thunder Stouted whis- Whiskey is the culmination of all things DIY from Rogue. Rogue Cooper, Nate Linguist, charring a barrel of Rolling Thunder Barrel Works in Newport, Oregon, uh, released each February, Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout is aged in whiskey-soaked barrels that are made at Rogue's Rolling Thunder Barrel Works. Rolling Thunder Stout of Whiskey takes this a step further. So, uh, Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout is something they do every year. Rolling Thunder Stout of Whiskey is new. And here are the steps involved with the whiskey. Rolling Thunder Stouted Whiskey starts with barley grown and harvested at Rogue Farms. The barley is brewed into wash and distilled into whiskey. While master distiller Brian Pribble is distilling the whiskey, Rogue Cooper, which is a barrel maker, I did not know that, Nate Linguist makes a barrel out of Oregon oak. The whiskey is aged one year in these Rolling Thunder Barrel Works barrels. 
Towards the end of that aging period, brewmaster John Mayer brews his imperial stout. Brian's whiskey is then transferred into new barrels, and John's imperial stout is transferred into the whiskey-soaked barrels. After nine months, the beer is pulled and released as Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout. The original whiskey is then put back into the original whiskey barrels, and, or, which are now stout-soaked barrels, for an additional two years of aging. Rolling Thunder Stouted Whiskey, the final product of all this hard work and time, is hand-bottled and hand-numbered uh, and topped with a hand-branded topper. So the whiskey Oof. is aged in oak as a whiskey should be, and then they age the beer in those same barrels, and then they put the whiskey back into those now beer and whiskey barrels wow. to age. It's a lot of hard work, man. <sighs> that was hard work reading all that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sounds delicious. I was about to say, you know what's easy is going to be drinking it. Oh, it's going to be way <laughs> too easy. I cannot wait. There's a local establishment out here that often will have different rogue spirits. I am hoping they have it. It's called Wade's Wines, if anybody's out in our area. I'm going to look for this because this sounds fucking phenomenal yeah it does whiskey aged in beer essentially um what else oh charlie papazian turned 70 last wednesday and left the brewers association he was big in founding the brewers association big in getting home brewing laws passed for states that had not allowed home brewing yet in the 70s and just kind of like the father of home brewing and has written a bunch of books about godfather it. Right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so if you know who he is, he's no longer part of the Brewers Association. He has retired and moved on. I almost said that as if he had died. He has not moved on, moved on. Right, yeah. Just moved on to bigger and better things. Okay. Uh, Magnolia Brewing, which is up north, and 21st Amendment Brewing, also up north, NorCal, are going to release 12 strong beers in February. 12 strong beers. Yes. Uh, they have teamed up again for a month-long celebration of strong beers in February, featuring brews over 8%. There you go. Strong Beer Month is not for the faint of heart. Previously, nope. the theme of Strong Beer Month focused on classic rock albums. However, this year, the brewers were inspired by... by 1950s and 60s monster movies. I love it. Yeah, I thought you would. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Dick Cantwell from Magnolia, Sean O'Sullivan from 21st, and the brewers from each respective brewery, craft beer drinkers can enjoy 12 new monstrous brews, six from each location throughout the month of February. So if you find yourself in the San Francisco area, head on over to Magnolia Brewing. You'll get Brute Cocktail, which is a guava, pineapple, and mango Brute Imperial IPA. Promise Land, which is an Imperial IPA. Stop Motion an Amberana aged imperial stout king Colne, which is an imperial kolsch i've never heard of an imperial kolsch kolsch i didn't know you could have an eight percent kolsch that's kind of crazy <laughs> uh cucumber constrictor which is a double cucumber meyer lemon ipa and queen of the underground a blend of barrel aged old thunder pussy barley wine and Whoa. sour beer Whoa. i'm all over that thunder pussy <laughs> right <laughs> There's a drop right there. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that a James Bond movie or something? Thunder Pussy. Thunder oh, Octopus. 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 Eight pussies. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's quite or the a night. pussy with tentacles. Yes. <laughs> Either way, it's scary. Yes. Twenty uh, First Amendment, on the other hand, will have the Curse of Wheat Wine, which is a wheat wine. Oh, Ooh, that's all it says is wheat wine. Hmm. Uh, giant Killer Milk Stout Robots, which is an Imperial Milk Stout on nitro. Monk's Blood with raspberries and Belgian chocolate, which is Belgian-style dark, strong dark ale. Mm -hmm. Baby Horse, which is a Belgian quad. Hop Nine from Outer Space, yeah. which is a West Coast triple IPA. And Smog Monster, a double hazy smoked IPA, which is a collaboration with Magnolia. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I like what they did there. Yeah. I thought they are going to kind of go more the traditional, like actually naming them after werewolves and vampires and <laughs> stuff, but... I like that they kind of did their own kind of flip on it, and I'm sure it's going to like reflect on the bottle or yeah. the can. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see the artwork on that. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Cans for cans. That's right. Um, anyways, find yourself up in that area in February. Check out the respective websites for different monster movie screenings they'll be doing at the various breweries. Love it. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and finally, Little Rock Police Department has deemed it uh, not right to give Lime Scooter Rider. Lime Scooters are like, the e-scooters, oh. you know, like the, what do, they, what do yeah, we have out here? Like, like the bird. bird. Yeah, bird scooters or whatever. Oh. Uh, you cannot get a DWI while on a lime scooter Love it. in Arkansas. Or really? in we're Arkansas. just talking about that. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about that woman on the Yeah, rascal, last episode. Last the, the, yeah, last episode. Yeah, the, the fat person wheelchair thing. Yeah. She was drinking uh, wine out of a Pingles. And they Pringles didn't give can. her a DUI. Yeah, they probably didn't 
catch her in the act so they couldn't but uh perhaps little, little rock pd says they will not give you a dwi if you're riding a lime scooter hmm. they can give you if you're drunk they can give you a public intoxication which is not as bad as a, as a dwi correct but they've decided that uh, the scooters are not automobiles i guess or right. modes of transportation which is true i mean they're not like you know death machines that you're driving Mm-hmm. you're behind the wheel of you know if you get in an accident in a car obviously that you could kill someone or you could hurt yourself yeah if you do it on a bird or a line where you're just going to end up on youtube so it's like not <laughs> a big deal. yeah Twitter. i mean your feet are off the ground and you are moving at a somewhat high rate of speed yeah but, but yeah. just make a fool out of yourself you will mostly just make a fool out of yourself as long as you don't crash into some child or something yeah nobody's hurt yeah. and that's little rock arkansas Little Rock, Arkansas. Where you, I think everybody you, needs can, a gun. you can drive with a beer in one hand and a gun in the other. Yeah. yeah. While your so. her cousin sits on your lap. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Little Rock, y'all. Yep. Damn. Our best listeners for next week. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I bet you they'll come in, <laughs> come in droves. Yeah, either that or hate mail on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> one or the other. So uh, that's that's all we got here. Speaking of Twitter, at unfiltered gents, send us that hate tweets. Yeah. Or something. Anything. Before yeah. anyone sends any corrections. My stoner Mount Rushmore uh-huh. is actually Cheech and Chong, Snoop Dogg, and Willie Nelson. Okay. Oh, yeah, I had go. to make a correction there. there Red Man and Meth Man are not in there. They're on the okay. next four. Yeah. They're, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're climbing their way up. I was thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't leave out Snoop. That's no, for sure. No, cannot do that. Yeah. Snoop's the best. You know, Coley from the Booze League just met Snoop Dogg at a hockey game. Oh, really? He was at a Kings game. Yeah. Oh, wow. It seems pretty cool. So, anyways, uh, that's all for us at The Unfiltered Gentleman on social medias, except for, of course, Twitter, which I just told you was at Unfiltered Gents. Don't forget to check out Flatfish's Resilience IPA Grand Tasting February 20th and let them know if you can help them out. Uh, mbrown at kantarasellers.com is the email. What else? The unfiltered gentleman.com. That's for sure. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and all that good stuff on whatever podcast app you are using. 805 538 beer 2337. That's where you drunk dial us and leave us a voicemail. And I think that's pretty much everything. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for drinking with us. For those of you celebrating dry January, <laughs> Jose. <laughs> it's almost over. Good it's news. almost over, man. <laughs> it's almost over. That liver is crying. <laughs> it is almost over. So uh, you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> to all of uh, the normal people out there, I hope you're staying hydrated. <laughs> smart people, all the smart people. I hope you're staying hydrated. <laughs> and on that note, good night, everybody. <laughs>